Besides eating, working out, and partying, there is something else on this earth that is very important, and that is the difference between plant cells and animal cells. Yeah! When looked at from the outside, plants and animals are very easy to differentiate from one another. But what about their intercellular space? Before we compare the two kinds of cells, we should take a look at both of them individually. Because when you are comparing something that you have no clue of, it will lead you to exactly one thing, nothing. So let's first give you a rough overview, especially for those among you who are minimalists, way too busy, or just can't be bothered to watch the whole video. Let's start with the plant cells. In general, it is very important to know that the cell is divided into compartments and every compartment has a different purpose. Those reaction chambers are also called cell organelles. Cells have no such thing as an empty space since they are completely filled up with proteins and other substances. Plant cells contain a cell nucleus, chloroplasts, mitochondria, an endoplasmic reticulum, a Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, peroxisomes, and a vacuole. You can see the cell membrane surrounding the whole thing and the cell wall with its plasmodesmata. Is the animal cell really that different? Well, as you can see, it is the exact same rubbish as the plant cell. It also contains a cell nucleus, mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, a Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, and peroxisomes. And of course, the cell membrane is there too. On top of that, there are centrioles and lysosomes. When we compare them, we can see that only the vacuole, the cell wall, and the chloroplasts are missing. Instead of the plasmodesmata, there are desmosomes in the cell wall, which means that the cells are connected with each other in a different way. But let's get to that later. The ones among you that are interested in understanding more than this need to stay tuned now. What do these little parts of the cell, meaning the originelles, have to offer? Let's take a closer look at plant cells. The cell nucleus, with its little nucleole, also called nucleus, contains the genome. That is the place where the DNA replication and transcription takes place. There is more genome in the chloroplasts and the mitochondria. The chlorophyll is responsible for the chloroplasts green color, not only on the image, but also in reality. This is the place where photosynthesis takes place, meaning carbon dioxide and water are converted into glucose, which means sugar and oxygen. Mitochondria are the cell's power station. They provide the energy for every process that takes place in the intercellular space. The main part of cellular respiration takes place here. The cellular respiration converts oxygen and sugar into carbon dioxide or water and energy. Mitochondria are sort of the counterpart to chloroplasts. The endoplasmic reticulum lies right next to the nucleus and is basically a channel system. It is responsible for protein biosynthesis. Ribosomes are located in a part called the rough ER. Synthesis of particular proteins takes place here. The other part has no ribosomes and is responsible for fatty acid and steroid production. It is called smooth ER. It functions as a storage for calcium, or in the liver as a storage for glycogen. Apart from that, it is important for the cell detoxification that takes place there. But what are these ribosomes? They consist of rRNA and ribosomal proteins. They are responsible for the process of translating the mRNA, messenger RNA, into a sequence of amino acids, which is therefore called translation. Imagine them as little machines that produce proteins. They can read DNA like a construction plan and execute that plan by constructing a building. The Golgi apparatus is responsible for cell secretion and later on the modification of proteins. In this apparatus, vesicles are packaged for safe transport of the synthesized substances to their destination. It is about sorting and transporting substances, basically like a post office. Moreover, it is important for synthesis and cellulose. The Golgi apparatus consists of some membrane-enclosed cisternae, cavities, that cluster together with dicosomes. Depending on the cell, the number of dicosomes can vary. The peroxisomes take care of detoxification by converting peroxides into water in order to protect the cell. Whoever thinks the vacuole is rather unimportant is miscalculating some things. 
It usually occupies the biggest part of the plant cell. The vacuole is filled with cell sap. The center vacuole is responsible for the cell's circular shape, growth, and color. Moreover, it is responsible for the turgor pressure that is used by impatiens when they throw their seeds everywhere to give you an example. <laughs> when you realize that you didn't water your parents' plants like you should have and it's the day before they come back from their holiday, the turgor can save your ass and revive your plants in a minimum of time by giving them a last-minute water boost. Bloody hell! Here, dissolved substances are stored and toxic substances kept under control so they can't cause the cell any harm. The cell sap helps the vacuole to digest small molecules. It is surrounded by a membrane called the tonoplast that separates the vacuole from the rest of the cell. Plasmodesmata are deployed at the contact points between plant cells. They are channels that traverse the cell walls of two plant cells. In animal cells, they are replaced by desmosomes. Two animal cells can connect through a small tube and exchange substances. The cell membrane is very important as well. It consists of a lipid bilayer with different proteins and separates the intracellular space from the cell wall. Moreover, it is semi-permeable. Small reminder, semi-permeable means semi-pervious, so only some substances are allowed to pass through. The cell membrane is basically the cell's bouncer. The plant cell wall is right behind it and it's where different cells bump into each other. What does it do? It provides stability and is important for pressure equalization so that the cell won't explode or something. It also protects the cell from harmful substances by giving them no permission to enter. So back to the animals. The animal cell contains everything apart from the vacuole and the chloroplasts. That is very logical since animals don't perform photosynthesis. One simply cannot exist on air and love alone. Otherwise, all animals would also be green. <laughs> There's also no cell wall. Why not? Since the animal cell has no vacuole that contains liquids, there is no need to protect it from bursting. But the cytoskeleton that supports the cell is way more developed in animal cells than in other cells. On top of that, animal cells need to be more flexible which plant cells can't be because of their cell wall. So, very important, remember that the animal cell has no cell wall. Also, the animal cell has some special things, just like the plant cell. There are centrioles in every animal cell, but they're only found in plant cells of the lower plants like algae, mosses, ferns, and so on. Other plant cells do not have them. And what can the centrioles do? They consist of little tubes called microtubules and fulfill different transport and support functions. They do a lot of the mitosis and meiosis when they pull half of the genome to each side of the cell. Then there are the lysomes, small vesicles filled with enzymes that are produced by the Golgi apparatus. It's their job to digest certain substances and parts of the cell or recycle them if possible. They also play a huge part during cell regeneration. They are also important during cell death, since their membrane dissolves and the enzyme then eat the cell up entirely. The vacuole takes over some of the lysome's functions in the plant cell. Cytoplasm can be found in both types of cells. It consists of cytosol and cytoskeleton. Cytosol is the substance surrounding all cell organelles. The cytoskeleton is made up of proteins, stabilizes the cell, and takes care of the shape, flexibility, and transport inside the cell. If you take the organelles in the cell and the cytoskeleton as one, you can call it the protoplasm. So those were the most important facts about cell organelles and the two different types of cells. Yes guys, now you know the basis of what allows you to enjoy things such as eating, working out, and partying. Without these tiny buddies, none of that would even be an option. We conclude, plant cells and animal cells have a lot in common. Both contain a cell nucleus, mitochondria, an endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, and peroxisomes. Moreover, plant cells have a vacuole, chloroplast, and a cell wall with plasmodesmata. The animal cell has nearly exactly the same stuff. The most important differences? Plant cells have a solid cell wall that protects the cells and keeps them in shape and position. The animal cells do not have one, but don't need to take in that much water and need to be more flexible anyways. That is also why they don't have a vacuole. 
there are also no chloroplasts in animal cells since they don't perform photosynthesis. But animal cells have centrioles and lysosomes instead. Cytoplasm is found in both types of cells. Yep, that's a lot for now. Here you can see the whole thing in tabular form. PC and AC obviously stand for plant cell and animal cell. So, see you later guys.